coaxing it into that, that just one person, I guess. Thank you very much for having me time. <laughs> yeah, <I can laughs> My friend decided to do with me, she had to get a drunk. Hello and welcome to Extraordinary Stories. My name is John Limpus and today I'm delighted to have James Taylor with me. Hi James. Hello John, how are you doing? I'm good, good, how are you? Yeah, not too bad thank you, not too bad. Good stuff, so the reason I've got James here today is basically James and I will be working fairly closely together over the next month because uh, James is basically going to be my boss. Uh, so <laughs> I'm endearing myself to him here. So, so, so look out. Yeah, exactly, yeah, definitely. But with, now really, I am doing an event called the Thames Doggy Challenge, where 10 of us will be doggy paddling the length of the Thames. And my good friend Hamish and James got together to create that event. Now, Hamish comes at it from the kind of adventure angle, but James actually is a trustee on the board of the Stem Cell Research Foundation. Um, and your own story as to how you got involved in that, I just heard James and I was just like, blown away by it, I truly was, and uh, I just wanted to share it with everybody here, and also your passion for stem cell research, so if that's alright, I thought we could just uh, have a little chat about that today. Well, yeah, of course, um, I think, um, as you rightly point out, my sort of uh, interest in, in, this, in the stem cell area of medicine is, well, it's long-standing and, and, and I guess personal to a certain extent, in that um, I suffered a spinal cord injury um, nearly 10 years ago now. Um, uh, br briefly, to sort of run you through what what happened on that day, and it is, and it was just one day, and in fact one minute, because the nature of a spinal cord injury is thing things change that quickly. Um, I was uh, I was on holiday down in Portugal on the Algarve, went for a swim one day in the sea. Uh, dived in, misjudged the depth of the wave, and um, yeah, before I knew it, I'd, I'd, I'd broke my neck on on wet sand, and it's um, you know something that I've done thousands of times before in terms of you know the dive, and you know on that one day it was um, it, it it was just not uh, not not done as it had been done before, and things conspired to um, you know result in spinal cord injury. So that that was kind of my Sort of story, and it was a very much a, a life-changing moment that um, put me into into a world that I really knew nothing about, um, and you, you don't really want to know anything about until I guess you you end up there, and and obviously that resulted in you know severe damage to the spinal cord, which is effectively um, irreversible nerve damage. The, so, the so what were the? Becomes, you are asking what were the? So you were 25. You're on holiday in Portugal. You are, you know, a very keen sportsman, um, very active exactly. in lots of areas. And as a result of that injury, what were the changes to your body after that damage to the spinal cord? I mean, it's total. It's um, you know immediate and complete paralysis, really, from from. From the neck down, wow. uh, so that you know obviously affects all four limbs, um, and yeah, that's that's the, that's obviously the most immediate um, result. But you know, going forward, you know, as you come out of um, sort of hospital and the rehab, you know, the the implications that that has on you know where you live, what you can do, um, how you go about your daily life. Um, is it's just a huge change, um, and as I said earlier, it's it's it really is you know from one minute to another. Uh, but that's kind of unique to spinal cord, um, and that nerve damage is is in one instant. Whereas you know I I've become fully aware that there are various other types of um, nerve damage that that can. Um, hopefully, be um, reversed or improved by stem cells. You know, by nerve damage, we think of uh, multiple sclerosis. You know, that's damage to um, the nervous system that happens over time um, through to blindness and, yeah. and heart disease. These these are all um, areas of medicine that um, 
you know, are damage to cells, whether it be through accident or illness, um, that you know the, the the stem cell potential, shall we say, holds so much for all these um, conditions. And it was through yes, my own circumstance that I I guess began to become familiar with stem cells and. And the potential of what was there. So, and is that I, um, to a certain degree? If you don't mind, so you basically, because I know you were working in finance before, you kind of changed your exactly. career slightly. Completely, so. com completely unrelated. Um, you know, my career was, um, you know, leaving university and, and and going to work in in the finance area. And you know, I must say, medicine or uh, research. Medical research was was nothing I particularly had any fondness for or, or knew anything about. So it, it certainly was driven by circumstance. But then you found yourself. Um, I know you rebuilt your career, rebuilt your life around. As you said, you had to change a few parameters. But then yes. now you are now a trustee on the board of the UK Stem Cell Foundation. And I've had a look through the board, and I would say you are, as we noticed. The youngest by about 30 years so you are you know a high flyer with regards to trustees um why why did you want to take a role like that and you know what you know why did you want to get involved at that level with the, the stem cell research because I, I i really think it's it's the potential and it's what's held for the future and it's not just people that are um suffering or um, you know having illness or injury now this this really is you know for the future meds you know wow. the, the, there is so much potential I think uh, and I say it often every single one of us can think of somebody we know love are close to that has or has, been suffering from, um, you know, one of the illnesses or diseases that potentially could be reversed by this. You know, it's it's huge. We all know somebody who's suffered, um, you know, uh, paralysis of some sort, uh, heart disease, um, Parkinson's, MS, blindness. You know, the list goes on. So they can and all be benefited. And, and was that why you were so passionate it about all, it? Because it's so wide, exactly. wide reaching. It's so it's it's so, it's so wide, and and there are lots of charities out there that you know maybe just focus on spinal cord injury or help people in their rehabilitation and uh, and whatever, and, and they do they do great work and they support people excellently, but. The real thing that I thought was we need to get to the root of these problems and stop them happening, right? Or reverse them when they do happen, uh, and that's the real way to, you know, help people is to, you know, offer that hope and uh, an ability to, as I say, either reverse or or prevent, uh, and that's. You know, that's that's the crux of it, really. So, how ambitious? I mean, you know a lot about you know stem cell research, and it's good for people to be educated about it because it's quite a niche area of medicine. Um, it's a very fast-growing area of medicine. I know that. You know, how ambitious are the is the is is the is the foundation? I mean, is it? Are we talking fifty years that they think they might have some breakthroughs in Parkinson's? Do they have any vision, or is it completely unknown and they're just you know, uh, just open to possibility. A, a lot of it is unknown, but there have been some some good successes already in in some um, corneal blindness trials that we've done or supported, um, and various other things. Tentatively, uh, you know, there's been some uh, you know good stories coming through in in spinal cord injury as yeah. well. So, so we we are making progress, um, but what we really need is is um, you know, more impetus and more drive to 
to take these through to clinical trials. That's really what we're trying to do: is is take this science um, and, and actually apply it to the human setting. We we've had you know a good deal of success, as I say, in the laboratory and in various um, forms. But but that's what we want to do: is is take these therapies through to you know, applying them to people um, in a clinical setting. That's that's what we need. So, and so, so what you're saying, if I can just say, James, is kind of, from what I understand, it's essentially for you, stem cell research is, is quite unique because it addresses the causes of a lot of these issues. And yeah. it could do something that, you know, the rest of medicine, it's a completely different angle on a lot of these problems. And we can start seeing real results, you know, yeah. Uh, you know, possibly with clinical trials in, in the near to medium future, which would be really exciting, wouldn't it? Well, that's it, and, and, and it's and it's using one's own body to to, to help um, fight and reverse these illnesses and conditions, and, and that's the key thing. You know, um, you know, other therapies, you know, the risk of rejection is is much better, but you know, stem cells are the essence of the human body and, and used in the right way that, that they form the perfect um, uh, conduit to, to, to improving things. And, and, and that's, that's, that's the beauty, I guess, of, of the stem cell um, medicine yeah. as a whole. No, I think, and, and this is, and this is a, it's quite a personal question, but if you don't mind me asking, it's, you know, obviously you can you know personally benefit if some of these breakthroughs happen do you do you allow yourself to hope that there could be a breakthrough in your lifetime or do you in order to manage that expectation do you just say this is something for future generations does it you know do you i mean it's a, it's an interesting uh perspective i'd just be interested in how you kind of approach that Yes, I, I, I do. I do have hope, and there are, um, you know, small improvements would 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 greatly improve, you know, aspects of, well, my life, but 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 other people who are suffering from yeah. many, um, infections, just just small improvements, um, would would be huge, and I and I think it's important to have hope. Everybody has hopes for, you know. All the areas of their life, whether they have, you know, supposedly you know, illnesses, shall we say, um, you know, the the hopes for life are there, yeah. um, and you know, I I particularly do that, but I I think it's also important to live in the here and now as well. Yeah, you know, you you have to you have to do what you have to do now, and you know, live live. A life that's to the fullest and um, the most enjoyment you can derive, um, but but hoping that things will, will improve and will change in the future, and exactly. you know, that's 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 the best basis to do it on, really. Yeah, and I ask that um, question purely uh, because knowing you briefly as I do, you come across a very happy, uh, ambitious, and very fulfilled person in a lot of areas of your life already with a successful career, successful family, already contributing hugely to society. So it's uh it's it's interesting with you know but you're right that that kind of we all have hope and even for small gains it's always something that um yeah. can uh, can motivate us as well. Were you gonna add something there? Exactly. I think um, yeah well I think um you know one has to be a little bit wary of blind hope and yeah. just thinking you know, well, without basis, you know, X, Y, Z is going to happen that has no basis at all. But but what we're talking about here really does have foundation, and you know, taken forward in the right way. Um, you know, and, and I'm I'm no scientist, but, yeah, but you, you know, know enough I'm you're around it. Close to a lot of people who are. Yeah. Um. Who who, you know firmly believe and you know know that there can be improvements quite what the improvements are going to be and which areas of medicine um, exactly are going to 
you know, benefit the most or come first is, is a little bit unknown, but it will happen. It's just um, yeah. It's just a question of what, how it will um, how it will develop. So it's exciting as well. You're right. It really does sound exciting. And thanks for letting us know, kind of what stage stem cell research is, how it's different. I think it's going to really help people get behind the uh, the challenge and uh, and also hope, for a, hope so. yeah absolutely and and so for a small insight into your personal story and, and to a certain degree I know you downplay that hugely and it's very much about serving other people so I do appreciate you sharing a little bit there James but we will uh, see a lot more of you and <laughs> a bit of me on all the social media stuff I'll put the Thames Doggy website where people can support us sponsor us uh, and you're gonna you know, keep everyone up to speed with, you know, probably introducing us to the medical side as well. And we'll see, um, uh, we'll see a lot of us over the next month, hopefully. And um, more importantly, John, how's the training going? Going quite well, actually. Yeah, not, not too bad. I've had actually a little bit this week, bizarrely enough, as we've gone our first training weekend, I've got a slight little tweak in my back <laughs> from golf, but I've had about five days off and, uh, ready to paddle, ready to paddle on Sunday. I think, uh, I think, Everyone's finding that doggy paddle is a bit of a bit of an awkward stroke. Yeah, it's it's big on the your neck gets pretty sore after a while, and but my lats, the, my back is getting nice and big. I'm loving it. Yeah, you know, this, good, I'm actually good. getting quite okay at it now. So, um, but I'll be quite keen to catch up with everyone else to see how their training's been. So we got our first uh, meet up on Sunday, haven't we? We have exactly um, straight in the Thames. Yeah, thanks. I haven't really checked that location, but I'm there, I'm there. So that should be good. Well, look, James, um, thank you very much for your time. And uh, I'll put the website down there and everyone can follow us there. All right? Good stuff. Thanks, John. You too. Bye-bye. Are you up for doing something extraordinary? Come on, follow me. I want to help a thousand extraordinary people achieve a thousand extraordinary things. And I need your help. Let me know your challenges, your fears, and the people you want me to interview. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Awesome.